Hey guys, welcome back to Back Pocket Game Reviews. And this video has been a very requested video, so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do it now. Um, but it's essentially, how would I fix GameStop at this point? A lot of people always go, oh, well, what would you do to fix it? Um, personally, I don't really ever want to see GameStop go out of business. I'd rather see them evolve their business practice and build back a lot of that trust with fans or gamers in general. Um, an interesting fact that got put out recently, 74% of games purchased last year were all digital. That's not, that's not a good sign for GameStop. Now, keep in mind that doesn't include used games, so the used game sales are not totaled into that as a whole. Um, but the biggest issue I think GameStop has at this point is honestly its public presence. So too many people have been burned by GameStop in the past, so the biggest trick is going to honestly be essentially a rebranding. Um, stuff like Power to the Players, which have become meme-worthy at this point, needs to be tossed out. We need to get rid of that entire sentence. Um, I get it where you thought that was a great logo and everything, but with all of the terrible things that you've done on top of that, it's essentially a running joke now. Um, the rewards card, obviously, I think needs some work as well, especially when you have Best Buy and Amazon giving you 20% off of new games with their rewards version. So if you have Prime, you get 20% off of new games. And if you have Best Buy's Gamers Club Unlocked, which is the same price as GameStop, but you pay for two years up front, you're getting 20% off of new games as well. Um, I, I feel GameStop needs to A, adopt that model, or something similar to that to kind of entice their customers to come back. And I get it, a lot of people are going to say, oh, well, GameStop would lose money this way. If you charge more for a product, you make more money, not if you get less customers because of it. That is the key here. You've got to get customers in the door to spend money, or you're going to lose money. Um, and I mean, they can even adopt a similar policy to like Amazon, where it's and don't get me wrong, they make a, a little bit off of a new game. They're at least making 10 15% off of a new game, maybe more, depending on how many of that game they sold. Because sometimes, you know, developers and publishers will give them kind of bonuses, would be the way to say it, for uh, pre-orders or for sales. Different things along those lines help their profit margin as well. Um, GameStop also makes a lot of money off of selling the different posters that are in that store. And what I mean by that isn't selling them to you, but selling that advertising space for game developers to post up their poster. So when you see a poster in the store from GameStop and it has like Call of Duty on it, Activision paid to have that poster up. Uh, so that's a fun fact for you. Um... I think that you need to essentially start with that whole rebranding phase. I would probably retitle the Power Up Rewards card something else. Um, and I I don't think GameStop has lost all of its sales, obviously. I mean, it's, it's, it's steadily going down. Um, but I think that they need to stop targeting parents and kids so much. And I get it. You have this whole thought to yourself of... Oh, well, parents have a lot of disposable income. That's true, but your average gamer is over the age of 30. Guess who has more disposable income? My kids don't have income. So, I think you need to start tar targeting the core gamers again over targeting kids and parents and stuff along those lines. And don't be so pushy about, hey, bro, you want to pre-order Call of Duty? Um, and I get it. It's called aggressive sales. Aggressive sales are a tactic a lot of people use. However, a lot of the companies that don't use aggressive sales tend to do much better. Like, much better. Um, and I, I, I get GameStop is still the largest game store single-handedly. No one else that sells games only is larger than them. But... In that same instance, there's also no one else that just sells games that is competing with them anymore either, which is a big part of why GameStop kind of lost that edge. Um, you know, once you lose your competition, you kind of think you own everything at that point. Um, 
I'm not saying that you should stop asking for pre-orders. I'm just saying you should probably stop waiting it on your employees so heavily. And instead of punishing your employees for not hitting numbers, you should probably reward your employees for hitting numbers. I think that's actually a better method. Most people typically tend to respond better to positive reinforcement over negative reinforcement. My opinion, though. I also think another big issue that GameStop currently has is Obviously, employee theft was always a big problem, but they've the pay scale's gotten a lot worse. They don't pay their employees very much. I think paying your employees and taking care of your employees also helps with the fact of taking care of your customers. If your customers aren't happy shopping in your store, and I'm not saying all GameStop employees are terrible, but I'm saying 90% of them are probably at least somewhat dissatisfied with their job there. A good chunk of them are. Or at least can see where it should be improved. And I get a lot of people like, oh, you work in a game store, it's not that hard. Mm, Yeah, except for the hours that they give you are garbage. So pretty much the only people that really typically want to work those hours are college students. If And this is if you're not a manager. College students and... Um, high schoolers and they won't hire high schoolers so that rules that entire thing out um but they're very pushy on games that people typically aren't going after because they'll be like oh this is something they'll do they'll be like if you sell if this whichever store gets the most pre-orders of call of duty you'll get the season pass for free okay so we have to push call of duty now so every now and then they will try to run these little reward things and A lot of GameStop employees honestly don't care about Call of Duty. They're pushing it because the company wants them to push it. That's it. Um, I'm not saying I hate Call of Duty. I'm not saying that anyone there hates Call of Duty. Um, But a lot of gamers, it's it's not a core game anymore. A lot of core gamers prefer games like Battlefield or Rainbow Six Siege. Um... Or it would even be really nice to see GameStop push an indie title. My god, that would be shocking, wouldn't it? But those AAA developers, they're willing to pay way more money. Push our game. Make it worth our while. Um, I, and as much as I would love to get rid of this, this is one of those things that you can't really get rid of, but like pre-order DLC that's exclusive to a store. So you can't really get the DLC unless you pre-order it at that store. So that means there's pieces you can never get unless you pre-order a whole bunch of the game. Um, those were all originally pieces of that game that have been cut out and handed to the store for pre-orders. Um, I, I think if GameStop were to start focusing back on that core audience, the core gamers, the actual people that are gaming, um, maybe even try to get a deal with like scuff and sell scuff controllers in there or stuff along those lines, I really feel could help draw a lot of that target audience in. I do think that the collectibles is a wise idea. I think it's very smart that they're starting to sell collectibles However, a lot of the collectibles they sell are junk. And I'm pretty sure most of you are going to agree with me on that. There's there's some stuff you walk in there and you're just like, why are you selling this? Like, no one's going to buy this. At any point in time, did anyone come in here and go, man, I couldn't live without... Let me think of a good one. Hang on. Hang on. This Think Geek labeled lanyard that is $6. No. No one wants a $6 Think Geek labeled lanyard. I like Think Geek. I wouldn't pay $6 for a lanyard that says Think Geek. Um, I think they also need to do a little more to bring people back in. Like um, physical pre-order exclusives, I think, are a better route to go than digital. Like when you pre-order, you get a... Oh, man, I can't even think of the last one. When you pre-order Grand Theft Auto, you got a little uh, keychain with... Mine was the Bug Raider van, and it lit up and stuff. Uh, I think physical collectibles are a really good way to start bringing your core audience back in. There's no way for them to regain the PC market. That's gone. That's dead to them. They have no way of regaining that. If you buy a digital code for a game on GameStop's website, 98% of the time, you're getting an Origin or a Steam code. You're not getting anything that links to them. And they even bought, I can't remember the name of it, but they actually bought one of the companies that was competing against Steam and ran it into the ground. It's dead now. No one talks about it. GameStop had their own download service. 
then started changing it over where some of the games that you downloaded were from Steam. Then eventually changed it over to where all the games you downloaded are from Steam. So I, I don't see a point in selling PC peripherals there. Um, I know I have some PC subscribers. Just let me know in the comments down below if you've gone into GameStop to buy a Razer mouse or keyboard or Steel Series headset. Chances are that's probably a very uncommon thing unless they manage to clearance it out. And that does happen. And that's kind of also the point of where they buy so much junk collectibles that they try to push in store. A lot of those junk collectibles go clearance and then they're selling them for a huge loss. Now, I'm not saying to get rid of like or cut down your pop collectibles because obviously pop collectors buy a lot of pop collectibles. I do think GameStop overreaches a little far on their pop collectibles and tends to sell ones that don't necessarily appeal to their core audience. I also feel that trying to get into used iPhones and iPods was a huge misstep and Cricket Wireless is also a huge misstep. How many people are going into a GameStop? Actually, there probably are quite a few people in certain areas that are going in there trading a whole bunch of games so they can buy a burner phone to then turn around and sell drugs. That probably does happen. But most people aren't going in to sign up for Cricket Wireless. It's not like you're like, man, I gotta, gotta pop over to GameStop and get some Cricket Wireless today. Um, and I, I think the incentives for trading games need to be reworked. I'm not necessarily saying that you have to give more all every time, but at least, hey, you trade three games towards this. And because they used to do ex, um, different things like that where you trade three games and they'd have a list of games and you get this game without paying any money. Now, I get that they think it's awesome that they give $30 for certain games, but if it's within the first week, you should be giving them a lot more than $30. I fully understand where to a certain degree you have this feeling of buy low, sell high, make more. But most people aren't buying your pre-owned games for $5 less than a new copy. It's very, very rare that people are like, yeah, it'd save me $5. Let's go with that pre-owned copy. No one wants that. No one's jumping at that opportunity, especially when you're selling, even if you have Power Rewards card, that, that game's 50 bucks. So then I can go over to Best Buy and pay $47.99. I'm still paying several dollars less for it to be new. There's a lot of things that GameStop needs to rework, but the biggest one is trying to recapture that core audience. And a big part of why they lost it is because they alienate them when they're in the store. Don't ask me a million times if I want to pre-order something. If I say no to your first game, don't decide to pitch me a second game. I said no already. Second of all, your magazine sucks. Game Informer is seriously biased against a lot of games. Their reviews are probably one of the biggest jokes I've ever seen in my life. So that needs to be reworked. Then, give them some kind of incentive to sign up. Like... Give them like a SCAS bracelet and a GameStop lanyard. Help do stuff to bring back goodwill to your store. Make yourself the actual store for gamers. That's the thing you should be targeting yourself at. Um, you know, and there's a lot of stuff that's game oriented that GameStop doesn't carry. That you would think they do. Sometimes I have to go to Amazon. Sometimes Best Buy has it, but can't find it at GameStop. Um, and... I, oh, the website my god does that website need reworked their app is okay the app's not garbage but the website is terrible and i mean obviously it just recently got hacked so it's clearly not it's not you know the marvel of technology that gamestop is um but stop alienating the customer is the big one i i'm not against game protection guarantees i get a lot of people are but if you have kids, yeah, my kids break games. That happens. That's a thing. Sure, I'll pay you a couple bucks for the warranty. And the reason why they sell the warranty for a couple bucks is because chances are most people aren't going to use it. Most people will forget they even have it. But I also feel that incentivizing your employees rather than punishing them for not hitting numbers would be the best route to go to help bringing a lot of those customers back in, help what what happened to midnight releases? Is that like a dead thing? I remember we we were getting like twenty dollars was our budget to run a midnight release for a little while, 
and sometimes people just wouldn't show up. Yeah, I, that sucks when that happens. But, you know, midnight releases used to be like this huge spectacle. Like, stuff used to go on for this. And then their sales started dropping. And then all of a sudden all that started going to the wayside. Because managers don't want to work for $14 an hour. And have to do stuff in their free time to set up a midnight release event. Because, yeah, almost every midnight release I did that was a huge release, I set up in my free time. Like getting uh, TVs from errands to rent, or getting companies to bring food and stuff over. A lot of that would happen on my free time, and it was simply because I loved the game and wanted it to be this huge event. Um, but gamers like that kind of stuff. We like that. We enjoy it. And I understand that, you know, with digital releases, being able to preload and all that stuff, yeah, you guys have been at a little bit of a loss on that. Um... I think a new game return policy would be a great idea. Like, with a new game, you can return it in seven days if you disliked it. I get it. Yeah, you're going to lose money, but you can turn around and sell it as used, and you only lost five bucks. Most people aren't going to typically probably abuse that system, and you have a Power Up Rewards card, which already tracks a lot of other stuff. You can track when people are abusing that as well. Maybe give them, like, two a year where they can do that. And then it just tracks by the power-up reward system. There's a lot of different things that could be done. Obviously, I like to keep my videos under 20 minutes. So I'm going to try to cut this off very quickly here. Um, I, I just, I would like to see GameStop survive. I do think collectibles will be a great way for them to sustain that survivability. And I know a lot of GameStop stores are getting converted over to full think geek stores as opposed to being game stores. And I do think it would suck to lose the only really big gaming conglomerate there is. But with the what route they're going, most customers aren't going to miss them. Obviously, GameStop sales have been down. Their entire stock has looked like a roller coaster for the last decade. So, let's cut employee pay was their thought. And then our CEO could take a huge bonus. And I get it. Running, running a GameStop has to be so stressful. But most of the area manager or not area managers regional managers that i met used to work for music stores they they came from a dying company yet nothing's changing from the way that those companies went under as well so i i don't know there's a lot of stuff they could do to change it um unfortunately i doubt they ever will or attempt to um and hopefully in the future we'll see GameStop evolve and become, again, that store that actually is power to the players and doesn't alienate the actual core gamers over kids. But, guys, uh, I also will be uploading this without setting it to private first, kind of as a test. Let me know in the comments down below if you actually receive a notification for this. Just comment notification squad for me. Um, also, I really appreciate all you guys watching. All my live streams, though, have been moved over to BPGR Live, so if you'd like to catch my live streams, pop over to there. That is now where those will all be held, because I can now mobile live stream. So the next time I decide to wear a LameStop shirt into a GameStop, it'll be on BPGR Live. That's the name of the... No space, just BPGR Live. Um, but I do my drive streams. Everything's going to be on there from now on. So be sure and go over and subscribe to that, especially if you want to see the stuff like going into a GameStop with a LameStop shirt. Because uh, I might do that again soon at a different GameStop. But guys, I really appreciate all the feedback, and uh, I'll see you all soon. Uh, don't forget to drop a like if you enjoyed the video. And if you have any questions for me, you can let me know in the comments. I'm pretty active down there, or you can always hit me up on Twitter as well or my Discord. Um, but guys, I really appreciate it. I'll see you all soon, and I'll have plenty more content coming for you.